Hello, I'm David Wormsey, and in this video, I'm taking a look at Plugin Load Filter, which is an entirely free plugin from the WordPress repository that helps with speed and performance. And what it does is it allows us on an individual page or post basis to deactivate unnecessary plugins, so speeding up our sites. It also supports custom post types and does a few other things which I'll be talking about in this video. It's been around for quite a number of years and it seems fairly well updated and supported. I'm not worried that as I'm recording this, it is eight months since the last update because it's not the type of plugin that really should need many updates at all. It has 5,000 active installs and a five star rating. It's not the only plugin of its kind that does this. I have on my own projects for a number of years been using this plugin, Plugin Organizer. It is perhaps twice as popular as it's got 10,000 active installs. It was updated very recently, three weeks ago, and it also has a five-star rating. This is a really good plugin. I may even do a video on this at some point because it depends which plugin you're gonna choose on your use case, really. It's not that one's better than the other. With this one, though, it's more complex. It allows you to group together your plugins and assign certain rules to them. But the downside is, of course, that it's easier to get lost with what you're doing with this. There is one other plugin that I should mention as it was mentioned to me and that is plugin logic which goes about this in a really simple way the thing about this one is that it doesn't look supported now it hasn't been updated in three years and only has 100 plus active installs but it still is working we can tell that by the five star rating that says it is and it's not necessarily a concern because this is something you could potentially do yourself with a bit of code and in fact I linked to an article on the Kinsta blog and that shows you how you can do it yourself and it also mentions the plugins that I'm talking about. Okay, let me go back to my article and I guess the first thing I must talk about is the, the warnings that go with this. It's so easy with a plugin like this to break your site and not even be aware of it. I've done this myself, setting up plugin load filter. So you do need to put a bit of work into it and understand your plugins and kind of measure whether it's doing anything. And maybe the benefits are not really that obvious. If you're only concerned about the load for your visitors coming to your site and you've got a caching plugin, probably not going to see that much of a difference. Sure, if you're disabling plugins on pages that are outputting scripts and CSS that don't need to be there, that's obviously going to help with things. But there are a whole bunch of other plugins as well that do that without turning off your actual plugin itself and all the kind of risks that go with that. So, you know, there is that warning. Also, I guess the general one about these kind of plugins, there's solo authors doing it out of goodwill supporting these and all the things that could go wrong with this. We can't expect them to uh, be experts in it. In this case, the person who's made this one is Japanese and has uh, limited English, of course, and is not familiar with something like WooCommerce. And what I found is that when I was using this plugin, WooCommerce is what got me interested in these plugins. It was a heavy plugin. I didn't want it on certain pages. And I found that on this, it will break or rather the add to cart Ajax functionality won't work on shop pages if you've got that turned on. In my case, I've not got that turned on. So this is not a problem, but that's something to know about if that's what you're thinking about using it. And a slight aside here with plugin organizer, if you're using SEO press and WooCommerce and uh, plugin organizer that will break too. It won't broke, break with other SEO plugins. So anyway, it's just uh, something to know about. But anyway, I see enough benefits and it's in context for me. I'm trying to clean things up for a logged in user. So recently I started doing some videos as well on setting up my new boilerplate site where I'm adding in a lot of onboarding. So with things like WP Admin Pages Pro, I've been adding in pages with videos and I've been doing my whole project management in there while we'll be trying to build the site. So I'm going to be logged in. I want to use my page builder. I want it to be fast without those plugins that I've added in the back end, slowing things down. And the same for the um, my clients who might need to be in there as well. So this was one solution there. and. Recently, I've 
done a, a check on the plugins that I like to see if they've got any more bloated or using up any more resources uh, since the last time I looked at them. And, you know, it was actually quite good with the ones that I've chose. But it did make me rethink again about Gravity Forms. I think it's an incredibly good plugin. It's one that I can't see me not using for many, many years. But I use it on a, a lot of really simple sites that have just the one contact page with a very simple form and it's quite a heavy plugin just for that use so this is you know help me with that rather than having to look for an alternative that lighter weight that I don't really like that doesn't allow me to expand on what the client might need in the future so generally it's worked out well for me I found that with my setup it's removing about 20 to 25 front end queries that really don't need to be there with my setup so it is speeding things up for a logged in user and it is of course helping even with the cache version because I'm disabling certain scripts as well okay let me move on to actually setting this up so I've got some screenshots here it's fairly simple but maybe not entirely intuitive so I'm going to go over to my starter site and where am I here okay so when you've activated this it's going to add this sub menu to your plugin section and when you're in that screen you're going to be faced with this it picks up on all of the active plugins that you've got in your install and by default it's going to set all this under the page type filter to normal view and all green there and largely what we're deciding here is which of our plugins are going to stay as normal just as they are and which are going to be ticked on here and it's red <laughs> which can slightly confusing which is just going to operate on our admin pages only in the back end only and then which ones we are going to activate or deactivate on different area front end areas of our pages so here I've done this with gravity forms under this page type so as soon as we decided these uh, we just need to save this and when we've done that I know it doesn't say save it says uh, filter entry but it seems to work as a save then we go in here and it shows us the pages which have selected and I think it turns it off by default I think they're grayed out but that's how I want it in this case because I want gravity forms off everywhere except for on this one page and when I've got it off here entirely then I can go into my page because it adds a section here and on this contact page I can put it to in use and turn these on save it update the page and that's done that let me just go over to my blog post because I can just show you it set up in a different way on another site here so this is one where I've got WooCommerce so with WooCommerce I'm actually keeping everything entirely on here so I thought in theory that should mean that my Ajax on the shopping uh, page shouldn't break but it, it still does so everything should be turned on here and then I'm individually turning off in this particular install just some landing pages so what I've done is reverse the logic in this case so when I go to those individual pages I'm turning it off with WooCommerce which would have been on and turning on Gravity Forms so I hope that makes some sense what you probably will want to do is to install, when I find my page here, bear with me, um, a plugin that's going to measure the queries at the front end. So in this case, I'm using, and I've linked to this in my blog, I'm using Query Monitor. I've talked about another plugin before, which is Usage DD, which is simpler. So it kind of records while you're in the front end. Uh, your queries and your speech so you can see the changes and that might be quite important because you know you could just quickly click through these and say oh, okay I don't need these in the front end and I'll turn it on as I have done with backup buddy but you know it may not be necessary I actually don't use backup buddy for our live saves when the site goes live I use updraft plus and when I've installed that because that's what sends my um, backups to Amazon s3 this is more of a local backup for the clients can use it if they feel they've done a lot of work. But at Updraft Plus just doesn't output anything to the front end. So you could just leave it on normal. There's not going to be any advantage to ticking that on. Backup Buddy is minimal. There's one uh, ex extra query that comes forward. I don't think it really uses up anything in terms of speed. But, you know, it's there and just one to remove. So there is a bit of research with checking those out. But definitely make sure that you don't make sort of silly mistakes like I have. And that was with WP Admin Pages Pro. I thought that was all back end. 
and then I forgot that I make my pages using Beaver Builder and this plugin kindly removes those templates from showing on the front end to my client so I turned it back to normal in this case. Okay I think that's pretty much everything I need to say on the basics of it. You'll probably want to turn uh, these as I have to ticked to disable them if you're not using post format types if you don't know what that is it was introduced a number of years ago I think because Matt Mullenweg is such a big Tumblr fan and automatic have bought Tumblr now but in that blogging platform you had different formats for different types of posts and it was introduced so you could do that with WordPress if your theme is set up to do that and supports it which None of mine are I've not used that at all. So I just tick those off so then you don't get too many options when you're um, making your decisions. It would add them all over here. And as you can see over here, if I didn't mention this earlier, it's added in and found my custom post type. And, and then again, this is another custom post type which is generated by Beaver Builder where I probably may need to turn off some of those for that. Okay, let me talk about the advanced ones now here. I think I'm not an expert on this, so I'll need to do um, some more research on this. But in basic terms, I can see the need to possibly turn off Ajax on a on a plugin by plugin basis. If you do a speed test and you find that in the waterfall for that speed test for front end testing that you see that there is admin Ajax PHP and it's taken a long time or that it just appears at all it's probably that one of the plugins is uh, either not configured to use what's in WordPress correctly or just overusing it and I know this has happened with a, a well-known page builder I think the issue is still there with it so you might find that you have plugins like that I've never found anything like that so it's there's no need to turn uh, any of those off I think with the other two here rest API and heartbeat these are things that I'm not sure if you would do these on an individual um, plugin basis, probably globally. So there are a couple of plugins out there that would can help with that one. There is this one, uh, Jeff Starr, he always has some fantastic simple plugins that solve some problems. And this is one where you can turn this off for non-logged in users of WordPress. So that's going to reduce uh, some of the weight on your server to some degree there. I think I'm going to be testing that out and see how that works. And for Heartbeat, there is this plugin uh, by WP Rocket, which allows you to actually reduce the frequency or decide whereabouts on your WordPress install is going to be used. Now, if you're not familiar what Heartbeat is, uh, as I understand it, it, it was introduced in 3.6. So it's a fairly recent thing. And what it does is it kind of pings the server from the browser every uh, 15 seconds, hence the heartbeat. And it's used to, you probably know this if you've worked on a blog post with somebody else at the same time, it gives you information that somebody else is working on things, so it protects you. And that's great, but constantly pinging the server and via the uh, Ajax or the admin Ajax PHP file uh, does put uh, extra CPU usage on your server. So if you're the only person using the site at all, I think you can just globally turn off Heartbeat, not you know, not turning it off on a plugin basis. Uh, you could just add in a script. But if you need to reduce it, you could use a plugin like this um, to and you know have extra control over it. Okay, I think I've probably covered all I need to say on this video. I went on a little bit longer than I expected. I'll probably be coming back to this topic or similar ones soon. If you did like this video, then please give me a thumbs up because it supports me and encourages me to do more videos, which I actually want to do. I'm going to have a bit more free time in a month or so. And please consider subscribing to the channel. I hope you have a really nice day. I hope to see you again soon. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.